So the other day I was listening to Syntax FM, uh, the podcast by Wes Boss and Scott Talinsky. And one thing that Wes brought up was that when you deal with an unopinion framework, a benefit of that is that you can bring your favorite libraries with you from project to project. And in his particular case, he mentioned Axios, which is his favorite HTTP client library. So I work with Angular, and Angular is, despite some misconceptions, actually quite an unopinionated framework. And you can bring with you all or most of your favorite uh, JavaScript libraries. So as a proof of concept, because I've never actually used Axios before, I thought it would be fun to see how easy it would be to use Axios with Angular. To demonstrate, I created a super simple demo in which we can make one Ajax request to the server to request a JSON payload, and that JSON payload will be used to populate a list of friends. So if I click Load Friends, you can see we made an HTTP request. I'm just hard coding a .json file here, and then I'm, uh, that payload has been being used to populate that, uh, that view template. And if we look at the network request, here you can see that uh, it went out to the server, again, a hard-coded JSON file comes back with some JSON. And um, one thing that we want to look at here in the request headers is that we're actually injecting the XR, XSRF token, uh, which is a nice little side benefit of using Axios is that it has a more of a backwards compatible uh, XSRF uh, approach than the current Angular HTTP client, which actually only injects XSRF tokens with mutating requests like put, post, patch, and delete. It doesn't do it with get. However, we made a get request here and you can see that the XSR, XSRF token is being included. So that's actually kind of a better than the HTTP client that comes with Angular. So anyway, let's take a look at how this works. So uh, let's start at the app component. So at the app component, here you can see that uh, I have this list of friends that I'll inject here if I have a friends collection that has a length. And how do we get that friends collection? Well, we're going to inject an instance of our API client. Now, the API client is just a service or a class that wraps our Axios access. And this is not specific to Axios. This is an approach I would use, generally speaking. Uh, typically, I like to create some sort of layer of abstraction around implementation details. So I don't necessarily want to know how the HTTP request gets created. I want to create something that deals with the intricacies of HTTP requests for me. So I create an app API client for dealing with a specific API. And here you can see I'm setting a cookie here for that XSRS stuff, but that's not really the point of this post. Um, if I click the link for load friends, you see that I make uh, a get call on API client, telling it to grab that JSON file, and then I simply return the payload into the friends collection where Angular populates it in the view template. Now, one thing to notice here is that I'm not doing anything in relation to change detection, right? I'm not telling it to trigger uh, change detection. I'm not telling it um, anything about when the data comes back from the API call. I'm simply making the API call and storing the response and Angular is just seamlessly integrating that asynchronous control flow with the inherent change detection of the component tree and everything quote unquote just works. And the reason it just works is because Angular uses zones and our Axios library under the hood is, is executing inside the default Angular zone or ng zone. So let's take a look at the implementation of API client. API client is just a simple class and you can see internally it instantiates an instance of the Axios library with some default values. Uh, I don't really have an API, this is just to make sure all this stuff works. And then the get method, what you can see, we're using the async await syntax here. And I'm awaiting for the request through the Axios client. I'm telling it to use the particular URL and the particular params. And then I'm simply returning the data returned by the API. So again, I'm not doing anything here related to change detection. I'm not having to trigger change detection explicitly. Everything, again, quote unquote, just works because Axios here, again, is inside the Angular zone and the Angular zone is intelligent about asynchronous control flow and integrating asynchronous control flow into the change detection algorithm. So um, again, this demo was not a demo on how to use Axios. I've never used Axios before this demo, so I'm certainly not the one who should be talking about its, uh, its usages and its intricacies and, and, uh, and caveats. Um, this 
was just a demonstration to show you how easy it is in an unopinioned framework, an unopinionated framework like Angular, to bring your favorite technologies like Axios with you from Angular project to Angular project. There's really nothing special that I'm doing here. I drop Axios into this API client. I drop the API client into my app component. I make the request and boom, it just works totally seamlessly, very little effort, and you get to bring your favorite libraries with you from Angular Project to Angular Project.